Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Guide. We are going to cover all of the new spells added in the latest DLC, The Last Sarkorians. That's right, it didn't just give us the new Shifter class, but also quite a lot of new spells, 9 total, and most of them don't even have anything to do with Shifter. Now the nature spellcasters such as Druid, and also Shaman, together with Ranger, although Druid and Shaman are full spellcasters, so are the classes that actually got most of these new spells. The second being Witch. Unfortunately, both Sorcerer, Wizard and also Arcanist didn't really get many new ones. I suppose because they already have the most robust spellbook selection of them all. And these spells will range from level 1 to level 5. Unfortunately, no new high level spells. So without further ado, let us get into our The Last Sarkorian's New Spells guide. And I'll go step by step, first with level 1 spells. Alright, so first we have Strand of the Tangled Knot. It's both a Divine and also a Witch level 1 spell. Can only be cast on their caster themselves, lasts 1 round per level and has quite a useful tanking property. The next single attack made against you takes a very big minus 10 penalty, and if it was a critical hit, it will instead be treated as a normal hit. Sure, it only works for a single attack, but for tanking characters, well, we really don't want to get hit at all. So this can always help at the very least prevent one attack. Plus it's just a level 1 spell too, even characters that only get a single witch level for tanking purposes, they'll have access to this. Sure, it is only going to last one round per level, but you can always extend it through lesser extend rods, or even quicken it even during battle, to save your life when you need it the most. So overall, quite a useful and handy addition to the game as a level 1 spell. For new level 2 spells, we actually have around 4 entire new ones. Most of them are right here. And I want to start with the one I find to be the most fun of them all. Winter's Grasp. This spell is essentially Ice Grease. It's both a Witch and also a Nature spell. It actually has double the area of effect of Grease, so quite large. With the major downside being Grease actually lasts 10 times as long, one whole minute per level, while Winter's Grasp is just one round per level. Now here's how this spell works. You cast it, and everyone inside the area of effect will have to make a reflex save or get knocked down just like Reese. except they will also take 1d6 points of cold damage each round and suffer a minus 2 penalty on saving throws against all spells with the cold descriptor until they leave the area. This is pretty nice because essentially this spell has a built-in debuffing penalty. Amusingly enough, Winter's Grasp doesn't seem to actually initiate combat once you cast it, which is extremely cheesy. Especially because one of the cheesiest classes at solo in the game, the Witch of the Veil, master at casting visibility and ending battle, well, they get access to this spell pretty early too. I mean, you already know how powerful Grease is when you add damage and a built-in debuffing effect, it's even better. Now let's cover another very nice buff, Bone Fists. This is both a Divine and Arcane spell, so even Wizards and Arcanists, Sorcerers too, get access to it. It has a pretty huge area of effect, can easily hit your whole party at once, nice duration too at 1 minute per level, and the effect is not only versatile but quite powerful. First, it's good to increase your own defenses, because each buffed ally will get a plus 1 bonus to natural armor class, and get this, it is another one of those stacking bonuses to AC. So essentially, any character in the game can now have an extra point of armor class, because it will stack with Bark Skin, Legendary Proportions, Scald Rage, and the list goes on. As for the secondary effect, it's to increase your own offenses. You will also get a plus 2 bonus on damage rolls with natural weapons, so perfect for shifters and other shape-shifting characters. Lastly, you'll do an additional 1d6 points of piercing damage on successful grapple checks. This is kinda niche, but the Shifter class does have some forms with free grapple. For another new offensive area of effect spell, we have Sickening Entanglement, which is a nature spell, meaning rangers can also get it. Like all of the entanglement line of spells, the area of effect is absolutely massive, it is actually twice that of Winter's Grasp, which is already twice that of Grease. 
so it can be somewhat hard not to hit your own allies with this. Essentially, all of the new entanglement spells, they do the same as entanglement, except more. This one will attempt to entangle all enemies. It doesn't really prevent them from moving, but adds debuffs to their armor class, attacks, and also slows them down. And this one has a built-in sickening effect too. Any creature that enters the area must succeed at a fortitude save or be sickened as long as it remains inside and even for 1d4 rounds after they leave the area. Note that this is a poison effect, which means it won't really work against demons. The duration is also great, just like Grease, 1 minute per level. Because of how huge the area of effect is, unless you're casting selective versions of the spells, so that it doesn't have friendly fire, ideally, you'll want to have your allies attack the enemies with ranged weapons, because this will slow them down. For the last new level 2 spell, we have Mortal Terror, which is actually an arcane and divine spell, not nature though. It only hits a single enemy, and essentially, they have to make a will saving throw. If they pass, they will be shaken for one round, and that's it. If they fail the save, however, they'll still be shaken, except for one round per caster level, and whenever they take damage, each time per round, they have to succeed on another will saving throw, or the fear effect will become stronger, so they start with shaken, they take damage and fail the save again, they'll now become frightened. Frightened means the enemies will now start running away from you. If they fail yet another saving throw and take damage again, while still frightened, they'll become completely unconscious. Overall, well, it's not that it's a bad spell, it's just that, look, it's enchantment, and at this point, level 2 spells. Enchantment focus casters can already cast Hideous Laughter, which is, I suppose, plain better, especially when you combine it with the best joke's mythic ability, so that it hits every single enemy on the screen. In the end, it's a fun spell, sure, but easily outclassed. For level 3, we have Burning Entanglement. Just like Sickening Entanglement we just covered, it works the exact same way as Entanglement, except instead of sickening the enemy, it deals fire damage to them. A creature that begins its turn entangled by the spell will also take 46 points of fire damage, or half, on a successful reflex save. If they weren't entangled but are still inside the dangerous area of effect, they'll take 2d6 points of fire or nothing on a successful reflex save. This will also grant targets inside 20% concealment, which is kind of annoying because when it comes to sickening entanglement, you can at least use your ranged weapons to easily attack targets as they're slowed. With burning entanglement, sure, they'll take damage, but... The consumment chances means you'll probably end up missing them. The damage also isn't really anything special, but I suppose if you were fully focused into fire like my Fire Lord build, it can be decent. It's just that arcane casters don't get access to this spell, only nature ones. For level 4 we have two new spells, one of them is actually druid exclusive, Explosion of Rot. It has somewhat of a small area of effect, a 10-foot burst surrounding the target you choose. It's necromancy, and will deal 1d6 points of damage per caster level for a maximum of 15d6 against all the targets. It will even attempt to stagger them. If they succeed at a reflex saving throw, they'll take half damage and will not be staggered. 15d6 is fine for a level 4 spell, and I suppose its saving grace is that it actually hits almost anything in the game, even undead and constructs will be hit by this spell. It's also one of those amusing spells that has even stronger effects against plant creatures, it's just that you can probably be counting one hand the number of plant enemies you fight in Wrath of the Righteous. Anyways, it's fine I suppose, but nothing special. Second we have the last of the new entanglement spells, Thirsting Entanglement, also a nature spell, and well, it will entangle the enemy except any creature that fails a save to avoid becoming entangled or the check to break free will also take 1d2 points of constitution damage. Constitution damage is nice because it essentially reduces the enemy's hit points, so makes them easier to kill. Overall, I would say it's the best of the new entanglement spells, although for a level 4 spell slot, we kinda could use something else. Also, don't forget you can stack this new area of effect spells on top of themselves, like Winter's Grasp, the Icy Grease, 
and one of the entanglement spells or even more it's up to you for the last spell we have tidal surge a level 5 one also nature only two so druids and shamans it actually has two different ways of targeting the enemy either a line which is rather poor because it's too narrow or through a 30 foot cone much better because of how wide it is in comparison for hitting multiple enemies anyways the damage will be 1d10 points of bludgeoning for every two caster levels you have for a maximum of 10 d10 at level 20 pretty nice most spells don't really have a d10 damage dice also enemies that fail their reflex saving throw will be pushed away from you and knocked prone kind of like the tsunami spell which does higher damage but can't really be applied with meta magic unless you use rods of course overall it can be a decent spell but once again it's nothing that special just as a finishing note i really wish they had also added more high level spells when you look at let's say cleric and oracle and their level 9 spells the list is absolutely anemic we only have around six level nine spells. I mean, for the ultimate spells in the game, I was certainly expecting a lot more, especially after all of this time. When you look at games like Baldur's Gate 2, your level nine spells there are actually world destroying tier, not really in Pathfinder, although I suppose some of the mythic spells make up for that. Here's hoping eventually we get something like time stop at least. Well, all right, friends, so this was it for my new spells from the last Sarkorian DLC guide. As always, if you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member. I highly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.